What are we talking about today? And we are live. Um, well, pretty That's much awesome. today, we wanted to ask you, you know, straight to the point. Do we still, as DACA recipients, you know, renew six months before our time, or? What, yes, what I mean, I, we've seen on the on the uh, on the Facebook group, a lot of people are waiting longer than six months to get their DACA. Yeah, this idea that immigration is oh, the four months is the no, you have to apply six months beforehand because you cannot trust the immigration service to do their job. Right. Right. One, two. The other thing to keep in mind, we're approaching a national election. And there is a very distinct possibility that Trompasso can win. You know, yeah. and you know, the first time he was president, he was surrounded by a collection of idiots. So they mm -hmm. tried to end DACA, but they couldn't because they were incompetent. It's really the only reason they didn't end DACA. They're just incompetent. Uh, it's also the reason why Biden didn't extend DACA, because they're also incompetent. But they've all they've learned now. So Trump gets back in, DACA is gone. Yeah. Now, the way, the way DACA would go away would be gradually. It wouldn't just like on Thursday, everybody's toast. It would gradually go away. So the longer that your DACA is you know, approved for, mm -hmm. the better for you. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, you definitely want to get that filed. Now, of course, if you expire in November 2025, yeah, you're not filing for a new. But if you, <clears throat> if you are expiring, let's say, June or July of 2025, you should be filing for renewals later this year, honestly, even eight months. But there's nothing that says you can't file early. Right. Um, so, I mean, is there a risk that, you know, they don't get it be done before Biden leaves and Trump comes in? Yeah, you might lose your money. But you also might get a two-year DACA. You get more time. Right, right. And uh, what about the SB4? What are your thoughts on the SB4 right now? Uh, are we able to travel to Texas? Way oh, the Texas? Well, the, first of all, the court put it back on hold. Okay. So Supreme Court took it off hold for like five hours. And then the panel, that is the three judges hearing the appeal, they voted to put it back on okay. last night. So basically they did, it wasn't enforced. They had oral argument this morning, uh, 10 o'clock on this. And it was a really interesting oral argument. The panel, the three judges, one is a Trump appointee, a complete conservative nutbag. <laughs> one is a, well, no, really. I mean, he's really off the charts crazy. Uh, one is a Biden appointee, uh, let's just call it a very liberal woman. Mm -hmm. And the other is a George H.W. Bush appointee. And she is actually a George W. Bush appointee. She's actually kind of the centrist, mm -hmm. but she's also the chief judge. Okay. And she was the one that really led the argument today in questioning. And she was very skeptical. And the question she asked the Texas uh, lawyer was, well, how does it work? Uh, he, he literally could not answer the question. Well, how can you deport? He, because it's not written in the law. There's no, and Mexico's already written the letter. Says we're not taking anybody back from Texas. Mm -hmm. So don't bring anybody to the border. We're not going to let you in. Mm -hmm. um, the law is unenforceable. The Fifth Circuit, this this panel is not going to let this law go into effect. So, you know, I mean, I I certainly wouldn't visit Texas. They clearly don't want DACA kids there. Right. If I lived there, I'd probably move. But then there's no there's no harm coming your way. Okay. Uh, but just understand, profiling is real. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in Georgia, for a while, we called it DWH, driving while Hispanic. Um, African Americans know this well, DWB, driving while black. So it's, it's happening in Texas, but they can't do anything about it. And ICE under Biden, they're not, ICE is not arresting anybody that, that the police detained for a traffic violation, regardless okay. of their status. They're just not doing that. Okay. So I don't think that law will go to effect. I think there's actually more harm <clears throat> that can come from the, the Georgia proposal and the Arizona proposal which basically says if you're arrested for anything, anything, mm -hmm. uh, the police now have to find out your immigration status and then hold you till ICE tells them whether wow. or not they're going to pick them up. That's a very different creature. That comes out of that poor girl that was murdered in, in Georgia. Uh, goodness, the dad, the dad of that girl came out and said, stop using it for political purposes. She was my baby girl. It has nothing yeah. to do with immigration. It's just a terrible thing. So we don't even know it's going to pass in Georgia. It passed the, the, the Senate. I'm not sure it's going to pass the House. Uh, and Arizona, who knows what's going to happen. So, I mean, there's there's always crazy anti-immigration stuff going on for Republicans, especially around election time. I mean, it's only a matter of time before we start hearing the word caravan again. Oh, it's yeah. an election coming up. There's yeah. a caravan coming. <laughs> it is. That is it's true. like clockwork on Fox News. You can just, it's like, oh, it must be an election coming up soon. Let's see here. And we do have some questions already. Uh Isra, I remember Miss Rock's ever said she doesn't know. 
Well, you should file by April 10th. I mean, yeah, you should definitely file by April 10th. There's no reason to wait on that. Uh, and, and of course, we haven't even touched on this, Vanessa. You know, I harp on advanced paroles all the time, all the time. And there are still people. I, a kid came in my office yesterday. I want to do my advanced parole. My sister's too afraid to do it. I mean, and he, and he came to me because he was in this group. And it's like, is she in the group? Yeah. She realizes that there is zero risk. And let me let me explain why so everybody understands. It's not the rumors that you hear about people being stuck. Now, you and I, Vanessa, know what happened. Right. Either they lost their advanced parole or they were gone. It was stolen or... They booked the flight the night it expired and their flight was canceled. Yes, we had one of those kids, right? Okay, yes. Like, Hello, is anybody home? And But you know what? They all came back, didn't they? Yes. We got them all back, right? So here's why you will not have a problem. There's a Board of Immigration Appeals case. So the immigration legal process has an appeals court called the Board of Immigration Appeals or the BAA. In 2012, they came out. This was before DACA. They came out with a decision on advanced parole. And in that particular case, it was a family that had applied for a green card and had gotten advanced parole and left. And they came back in advanced parole. And the government's argument was, oh, you left. You deported yourself. Right. The court said, no, no. If you leave the United States on an advanced parole, that is not a departure. And unless you've committed a crime while you're gone, right. you will. 100% of them be let back in. And I know that you've seen the language on the advanced parole. There's no guarantee of reentry. You know, that's just boilerplate. It doesn't yeah. mean anything. You yeah. will be let back in. There was the woman the other day, I'm sure you saw, who had been handcuffed. Yeah. She came into it, but she came across the bridge in El Paso. I mean, come on. I mean, if you not see what's going on around you. Uh, yeah, I just feel the borders are just off limits for me. I no, feel like I just wouldn't go near the border. Fly into a big airport, you'd be fine. Um, you're into the Cortito five minutes and then you're out. I mean, it's it's really no big deal. But please, I'm begging you, get the advanced parole. You just, you know, even if you're single, you think you'll never have kids, you don't know what's going to happen. DACA mm -hmm. goes away and you're stuck here with nothing and you've got a legal entry. Life can change in a heartbeat. You fall in love, you have a kid, all of a sudden, maybe you can get a green card. Yeah. That's the magic. That is That is the magic of DACA. I'm actually exploring something else right now that actually just dawned on me. Um, you know, we've been telling kids, if you got your DACA before you were 18 and a half, mm -hmm. you can have an employer sponsor you. You can't because okay. you don't you don't have unlawful presence. So, yeah, you can't get a green card. The only way to get a green card here is through an immediate relative that is a, a wife uh, or if you're the minor under 21 child of a U.S. citizen or mm -hmm. your child's 21. You can get green cards here. But you can't get a green card here uh, through a DACA advanced parole. You'd have to leave the country. And we've always worried about the fact that if you accrued more than one year of unlawful presence, you might activate the 10-year bar that's right. found in the Immigration Nationality Act 229B. So I've been studying this now for a couple of years. And I put a little a little burn up at the end of my own page about the H-1B. The H-1B, the visa for the H-1B is for people who have a bachelor's degree Mm -hmm. They're going to work in a field in which their bachelor's degree in. And it's a lottery every year. The lottery ends on Friday. So I said, look, if you got to your DACA before you're 18 and a half, have your employee and you have an employer willing to sponsor, sponsor you. Okay. But okay. that got me thinking again, what about the ones after 18 and a half? So we know from this case I just talked about that if you leave on advanced pro, you don't activate any bars. Right. So I posted about this on my LinkedIn page. And a former consular officer wrote, oh, they have a 212A9B bar. And I wrote her back and said, why? No answer. Mm -hmm. No answer. So I have a good friend who's a brilliant immigration lawyer, Cyrus Mehta in New York, an incredible lawyer. Probably, probably the smartest immigration lawyer in America, as far as pure brains are concerned. Writes lots of blogs. Just really, his blog's called the Insightful Immigration Law Blog. And it's truly for groupies like me. <laughs> but... I called him and I said, Cyrus, what's the deal? He said, you know, Chuck, I thought of that a while ago and I was at a conference somewhere and some officer was speaking. I asked him and he said the same thing your officer said. And when right. I asked him why, he didn't respond to me. Right. So we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the next level. So um, I am going to, every every six months, uh, the American Immigration Law Association has a liaison meeting with the Department of State's visa office where we can ask questions. 
Mm -hmm. And here's my question that I'm going to have them ask. If somebody leaves under an advanced parole, pursuant to matter of Arabelli, it's called, the case is called matter of Arabelli and Yarabelli. It's a great mm -hmm. case. Um, they, don't, they don't activate the bars. So question to the Department of State, would you find such a person who would normally be, be hit with the bar, but they mm -hmm. left with an advanced parole, would mm -hmm. you find them ineligible for a visa? I don't think they are. And frankly, if I go to federal court on that, I'm pretty sure I win. I mean, I'm like 99.9%. .9%, but I don't want to put anybody at risk, right? I don't want to sell somebody, go down and do it. And now, But here's the thing. If you have, if you've got DACA after you're 18 and a half right now, and mm -hmm. you have a bachelor's degree and you're working, your employer should file for you in the lottery. Like it's only $10. I mean, it's $10. If you win the lottery and you travel with advanced parole, this much we know. So the Department of State may say to you, oh, no, I can't issue you the visa you have a bar. But we also know they can come back on the advanced parole. Right. We know that, right? Right. So there's really no risk to them to trying. And I, not that I'm looking for a guinea pig here, but we do need an effective person to sue. So this is, but hopefully it's something we can resolve at the, there's a fall meeting coming up with uh, with Department of State. Hopefully we'll get an answer from them then. But this is, if if they if they say, you know what? We're going to follow that court ruling. If they mm -hmm. do that, that opens up DACA kids who got who had more than one year of unlawful presence to go to a consulate to get a visa, to go to a consulate to get a green card. Wow! Because they left with it, and the, and the and the case is says exactly the departure does not trigger the bar. Exactly. I mean, it can't be clear if yeah. that's the case. There is no excuse not to be getting an advanced parole. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's not this law yet, It's but it's something we've been that really good lawyers are thinking about as a way to expand what DACA can do, since clearly Congress isn't going to do jack squat for DACA. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. They just got us sitting in the limbo every. Yeah, every and they're not going to touch. They're not going to do anything. That's a good. That's a good idea. That's, so you that's my screen for today. <laughs> let's let's email Charles Cook. Uh, let's see here. Oh no, no. Go to the third one, Luis and Joan at five hundred one. Go look at that. This is this is the question that we see every day, and the answer, Vanessa, is <laughs> you're not going to have a problem coming back. In. You aren't. But no. you call Vanessa if you get yours <laughs> stolen. <laughs> Listen, we try our best in the group. You guys need to just travel, come back in. This is what we learn here. I mean, it says it in the document. Show them the document. You know, you're not I mean, going to you have a problem. But if you do get it stolen, and really, you got to be very careful. You go to countries that you really you're not familiar with, right? Uh, don't be walking around with a piece of paper sticking out of your back pocket. You got you got to exercise some common sense, right? Yeah. Um, if you're in a hotel, use the use the safe. All right, use the safe. Even I do that. Um, so I mean, just FYI, just, you're, you're going to be fine, but you need to call me, you know, just call me yeah. my website, my website's immigration.net. It's not like you can't find me. Really. Yes. I mean, there you go. This is Celia. Can you apply for a work visa if you have a master's degree, but have a lot of, well, just... this is what I was just talking about. It's a great question. It says yeah. my pigeon is you can, but it's not established, but we're hoping to establish it. Without a guinea pig, here's what I would do, Melinda. If you got a, if you got a, a, a master's degree and you're working for an employer on your DACA, beg them to enter the lottery tomorrow or Friday morning. I didn't think it ends at noon on Friday. It's ten dollars. Mm -hmm. It's okay. really easy to do. It, they can do it in twenty minutes. Uh, do it because you you were first of all it costs you ten bucks. So even if you get picked and you don't use it, it's ten bucks. Yeah. But if you do it, man, it could open up your life in a very different way than we've previously considered. There you go. December. December. December 2024. Probably regardless of the election, December yeah. 2024. New fees. You know, I actually I need to pull up here. Is the DACA fee going up from 495? I didn't I need to take a look at that. Um, let me see if I can find that real quick while we're, we're while we're live here. Um I think there's a, Ayla had a great link here. I mean, look at the comparison chart here for the uh, H21D. I'm just looking at that on my screen right now. The H21D, uh, God, there's so many forms. It's a, I have to keep scrolling. Okay, there's no there's no charge for the H21D. Um, it's the 765 they're charging for. 
So the 765, because the H21 is D is just is there. Right. The 865, uh, 765 is now going to be, uh, it looks like if you file on paper, $520 plus the $85 filing fee. So it's, it'll be 605, 605, a 20% increase. If you file online, it's actually, um, I don't know, this is weird. Uh, if you file online, it's actually going down to 470. So obviously file online. Hmm. Yes, so yeah, for you guys, it won't be a problem. So it's not a bad thing. Okay. I think we just spoke about this. All right. um, yeah. Can you still do uh, AP if you have a financial inspection and all that kind of Yes, thing? if you if you it doesn't matter whether you have unlawful presence. That's irrelevant to advance for all. We tell every I I don't know how is there a bigger building I can stand on top of and scream? <laughs> Please do advance for all. Come and see your grandparents. You haven't seen in twenty years. Santissima Tia Maria. I don't care. Go get your dental work done. There's actually an organization in South Texas where they do humanitarian trips mm -hmm. where you can and, and work in an orphanage and, and, and you know, so many, and options, so many options, honestly, so many options and people so many are just, options to do this. So, yeah, oh, this is a long question. Um, Greg, here okay, we go. Greg, uh, you don't see a lot of Greg's with DACA. It's probably Greg Audio, right? It's just, uh, Greg Audio. Hey. You know, it's, uh, you know, don't be scared. Well, possession of drugs, or get drugs. La, 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 la. you're fine. If you if you don't have a, an adult criminal conviction, when okay. you, first of all, you wouldn't have DACA if, if you had a conviction that exactly. made you ineligible for entry. You wouldn't. Exactly. Now, they can still ask you about it, but here's the deal. At the border, they say, have you ever used drugs? And you can say, no, I never used drugs. What about this arrest? I was innocent. Right. Now, wrong people, wrong time. I never mm -hmm. did them. Mm -hmm. they, they can't. They, they, they can't do anything about that. Not the resources. Right? Even low, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. And don't worry about this orderly cut. Don't drink first of all. Um, ASU. I'm an ASU grad. Congratulations, Greg. Fork them, baby. <laughs> Fork them. I think this is what they call them. All right. I have a question. I want to apply for AUS? Just pull through. Oh, Tay Mesa. Uh, see what I call OTM. I check. You cannot see my entry document. Did you get a stamp? Is there a stamp in your passport? Um, yeah, if well, you got you got a parole stamp. Good enough. Good enough. You got a stamp. Don't worry about the 94 card. The stamp Ooh. on the passport or the stamp on the um, advanced parole document? Yeah, either, either one. one. Either one. Okay. Either yeah. one is fine. The, the fact is their system sucks. Hmm. Their system, it's just not 100% accurate. <laughs> uh, I would, who, you were threatened? At the, who threatened you? At what port of entry? Make a report, file a complaint against the CDP officers. That is, I mean, I think that's the problem that we don't we don't do that. We just let it happen, and you know it keeps happening, and nobody gets file a complaint against these guys. That is, they're just pissed off. They're probably big Trump voters. They're pissed off that Biden's letting you do this so liberally, and this is their way to scare you. You know, screw them and the horse they rode in on. <laughs> file a bar, file a complaint. It's on the CDP.gov website. Nope, famous. no effect at all. First of all, uh, your husband's a U.S. citizen and your kid's a U.S. citizen. They're entitled to food stamps. That's why you have a co-sponsor. Perfectly okay. fine. Let's see. Well, I don't know what your RFP for. As the RFP says, we believe you're a mass murderer with 14 convictions. You're probably going to be denied. If it's because oh, really? your medical is out of date, you're fine. Mm -hmm. What do they have? I mean, it's like... They are issue RFEs for a million different reasons. So my friend, her friend, as a doctor, what is the benefit of applying for H1B? Well, H1B is a lawful non-immigrant status that can't be taken away because the president doesn't like you. That's mm -hmm. the huge benefit of an H1B. Okay. First of all, it's good for up to six years. You can renew it beyond that. It's much easier to get a green card. You can get a green card inside the United States. There's a jillion different things. Mm -hmm. So absolutely get an H-1B. If you, I mean, the thing, your chance of getting picked in the lottery is only like 20 to 30%. So not very big, but it's yeah, higher sure. than zero. Okay. 
And if you don't apply, it's zero. And then you're stuck on Doc. And if Trumpasso comes in, you're toast. Dice Laura, as I know, she was on the give you back in the commission. Yeah. How, how an officer in 2024 is not knowledgeable about DOC advanced parole, that has to be intentional. There's just, I mean, yeah, you know what? Memos, there's be, training. Even when we travel back from the Dominican Republic, they're like, you know, they're, at that moment, they're teaching the other people, like, this is that, that, I mean, are they hiring new people every single day? Yeah, it, has to be. <laughs> it has to be. Uh, I don't. I, mean. yeah, I agree, Emily. I actually have some good friends that sued on part of the fee increase, but nobody is suing on the whole fee increase. I actually want. Actually, I was trying to convince the American immigration lawyers to sue on the marriage-based cases because right now, an immediate relative adjustment of status case, things that you guys do. Mm -hmm. um, cost $1,760, which mm -hmm. includes a work mm -hmm. permit and a travel document. Mm -hmm. Those two things, those, those four filings or four forms to file will cost over $2,800 after April 1st. God. Now here's why that's in my opinion, illegal. The current adjustment application is 1225. And that includes a work permit and adjustment of status. Mm -hmm. That was a change in 20, in 2007, you had to file all separately. And the adjustment application cost three eighty, um, wow. plus it was like eighty dollars for a work permit and eighty dollars for a travel document. And so they raised it to twelve twenty five, and they said we can do them all together, and that's why forever and ever you'll be able to renew your work permits and travel documents. So now they want to raise the 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 AOS fee from twelve twenty five, which included those two things, right. to fourteen forty, which doesn't include those things. Mm -hmm. And so I, to me, that's a violation of the law. But we couldn't get enough lawyers to help us sue them. They, here's what they were afraid of. If we win, the other fee increase lawsuit that's currently pending is from Trump. And those fees are worse. Oh my God. What, I mean, if we lost this one, yeah. or right. we won this one, if we won this one, those might get into effect yes. if Trump wins. And that's their rationale. You know, this is, immigration's kind of got us in a rock in a hard place. You know, yeah. except, you know, you know, it's like a mafia choice. You know, choose your poison. You got to choose your poison. That is true. It's still outrageous because their service sucks. The yeah. fact that they have the word service in their name is, mm -hmm. is completely a joke. It should be called the U.S. Citizenship and, 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 and Immigration Non-Service. That's what it should be called. <laughs> this is Laura. It's hard to get to. Oh, well. Yeah, because your mom heard on the radio about La Tia's Amiga's best friend's dog who had a problem coming in 16 years ago, which has nothing to do with DACA. No, that's right. You know, they're always switching up the language of everything and they get confused yeah. with the words. Yep. Well, that's a great question. But Vanessa, what are you what are you seeing for processing times on marriage-based adjustments? Um, well, my answer to that, Charles, honestly, is just that we don't um, work for USCIS, so we don't know how long it takes. It could be two months, seven months. Um, well, you're seeing some in four months, right? Uh, and then you're seeing months. some in two years. Yeah. Now, if you go to USCIS.gov uh, and go to their useless webpage, which checks processing times, almost every local office it's says over, two years. Yes, over two years. So I, I and, really don't. But, but my experience is six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. generally speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, but it could take, because that, that number is 80% of the cases are done in two years, which mm -hmm. means clearly 20% okay. are taking longer. Okay. There's a lot of factors that go into this, not the least of which, did they lose your file? <laughs> which is you gotta send really that something again. they do. And you got to send that in again. Dice otra vez, Laura, how's a lot of different from H2Bs? Well, H2Bs have nothing to do with H1Bs, Okay. Uh, H-1Bs are for professionals, people with bachelor's degrees. H-2Bs, who actually has their own lottery, is mm -hmm. for non-skilled temporary workers. You don't, you can't do that. You're not temporary. Uh, so you can't do that. So forget about H-2Bs, not an option. All right, NIW, yeah, I mean, Syria, this is a good question. Uh, and, and this is why lawyers exist. That, you know, you, like, for example, you send me a resume by email, I tell you whether you might qualify for a national interest waiver. We're doing a lot of these cases right now. There's also a lot of garbage being filed for national interest waivers uh, by lawyers charging crazy, crazy, right? Somebody come to me and 
So the lawyer was charging him fifteen thousand dollars for an IW, which is my God, far, far more than it should cost. That is an IW. Yeah. So uh, NIW is a national interest waiver. It's a waiver of the job offer requirement. You basically, you self sponsor. Okay. Uh, but you still have the same issue. You still have to. You still can't adjust status from DACA. You'd still have to consular process. So the question right. is, can you consular process? Mm. That's what we mm. talked about at the beginning. That's the fight I'm. I'm starting to have with the government now. Okay. Dice Rayo, si se tuvo un DWI en el 2011, so la cual se retiró. Look, si tienes DACA, si tú tienes DACA ahorita, okay, tú puedes viajar. Puedes viajar. Yeah, porque no tienes un DUI. Pues, ar, siendo arrestado y siendo yes. condenado son dos cosas distintas. Mm -hmm. Y no puede ser juzgado por sus arrestos, porque él es inocente hasta que eres culpable. Entonces, estás bien, váyase. Oh, yes, mm. uh, nine years old at DACA since 2012. Got a mass parole in 2022. Um, I have been on for nine years. Like, why won't they file? Get a different job. <laughs> Change jobs. That'll teach them a lesson. Have a new employer file for you. My God, it's not hard. You, no, America's not, you know, we, we eliminated slavery. Start <laughs> your own business. It's America. There you go. I apply for the lottery. Well, if you you can actually self-sponsor your own H one B, it's actually allowed. Mm -hmm. So talk to a lawyer; it's allowed. Well, what kind of healthcare worker? I mean, do you wash people's feet? Do you change diapers? Are you a nurse or a doctor? I did. It just depends on what you are. Does your job, healthcare worker job, require a bachelor's degree? Mm -hmm. That's the question. You know, so my sister and I about to get for the same day for AP. Uh, pray. What do you think, Vanessa? You can send them in together. Don't send them in the same envelope. Uh, don't do that. Send them in together and just, and just put, yeah, put the same dates down. But really, I don't know what you're telling, Vanessa, but I, I'm saying, look, it could take four months. If you want it less than four months, you better have a really good reason, but we got to plan about four months out. Yeah. Tisana. Yeah, as long as it's postmarked. As long as it's postmarked by March 31st, you're fine. You're good. It's postmarks. Okay. Ah. Your grandmother was paroled 40 years ago? A parole is a legal entry. Yes, your mom can sponsor her for a green card. What are you waiting for? You've been, uh, got on now there, ASAP. <laughs> 40 years. Do it quick. Um, yeah, there you go. Great, Alma. See, it happens. It nice. Happens, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You already asked that question. You're good. Okay. Best way to Great. Good luck, Iris. Prayers yep. with you. Prayers with you. Remember, it's got to be an emergency. You got to sell it, baby. Bring <laughs> some tears and some Kleenex. Oh, that's the okay. um, saying. Yeah, the dates. First time applying. Well, that's a question for you, Vanessa. I heard the dates. It just says, when do you want to travel? Set. Put, the, put the dates on the form. But if you're done with 30, when apply for answer edition, remember that we need to submit. Uh, as long as you have a legal entry, you need to, uh, you, you actually, the I-130 is automatic. First of all, I'm sorry for your loss. It's terrible that you're having to go through this as a young woman. Uh, but the I-130 is automatically converted to a widow petition. Uh, I would strongly suggest talking to a lawyer. I don't know where you are in the United States. Uh, the best lawyer, I would say, the best lawyer on wid widow petitions is a guy named Brent Renison. In fact, Brent Renison is the only reason you can apply for a green card as a widow. He's the man on this. I think he's in Oregon. Um, but you uh, you need to include death certificate uh, in there. Uh, and uh, otherwise, you'll be fine with the adjustment of status, as long as you have your legal entry. So you'll be good. Let's see what's Let's see what's well, if your parents were never married, um, you would consider to be an illegitimate child unless your father legitimized you or recognized you over a period of time. So, yes, he can sponsor you if you meet the criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know where you're from, Ursula. Um, but if you're not Mexican, it's about a nine to ten year wait. Wow. For family-based uh, first preference. Too long. Uh, So these are possible, all right? These are possible, but they're hard. 
because immigration lives in 1950. And I think every marriage is mom, right. the husband comes home from his nine to five job and wife has dinner on the table and in a, in a cocktail dress and uh, we'll have hors d'oeuvres and a martini ready for him. So uh, all the ways of living that are different from that are a lot harder. This is the kind of case, honestly, that you want a lawyer at preparing and at your interview, honestly. Yeah. Plus, you better be traveling a lot and keeping all the documentation. Your documentation, yes. Well, this, Daisy, I'm assuming that you have a final order for some reason. You want to reopen the case and then terminate it so you can adjust status because you have advanced parole and are married to a U.S. citizen. And honestly, it depends on where you where the case is. So let's say your case is in San Antonio. Uh, they open the, the courts there, reopen the cases usually within a month or two. Pretty quick turnaround. L.A., it could be a year. OK, just depends on where you are. But I will tell you this. You better do it while Biden's president because they ain't happening once Biden's gone. Oh, my God. Scary. It's scary. Oh, we're getting to the uh, getting we're moving. There are lots of questions. Uh, you know, this is a, yes, the employer has to file for the H-1B lottery. Yes. Okay. Juan, I don't know what that means. E -W -E -E. Entry without inspection. Uh -huh. I assume that means he entered without inspection. I could, can I close my inessential order removal my, by my own self? Uh, probably not, unless you've got some legal training. I think you have zero chance of being successful. Doing I that. get a lawyer, yeah. Get a lawyer. That's well, not you have to reopen your in absentia and then close it. I hope you know the immigration court rules because they're complicated. Yes. Too complicated. You, the job is half, yes, the job has to require the specific degree that you have. Okay. Hmm. Gregorio, make sure. Oh, okay. we called. We didn't know who he is. Gregorio. Uh, yes, Vanessa, give me your phone number. No, just email the. Email, just get on the page. Yeah, just, got it. Get it. on the page. Help. You'll be I'm fine. Sorry. You'll be it's fine. You're gonna be fine, man. <laughs> Take a deep breath. You'll be um, fine. Um, <laughs> relax. Guys, it's so much. That's the only thing on my phone. <laughs> response now um you should I don't be even fine. Know what we're talking about the rfa you should be fine just yeah let it wait and see okay father of my son of 21 years when this wife put us of herself to get a touch during adulthood what about during the interim time frame that's really the question mm -hmm. you know you don't have anything during the interim time frame might be tough might be tough get approved visa visa uncle but well, is, is he your Santissimo Tio Raul? I mean, who is he? I mean, there's lots of people that claim uncles. Is he you know, like your dad's brother? How did you, how well did you know him? I mean, you know, Vanessa, right. what do you think? I mean, yeah. mm, I will add kind to that of, one another reason, if possible. You know, may, maybe you want to do a humanitarian trip at the local church down there instead. Yeah. For a week. Un amigo que tenía por su hija, ella entró en documentada y llegó a su permiso de trabajo junto con un viaje. Ella quiere saber qué es lo que se debe hacer para México nada más. ¿Cómo está? How did she get, ¿Cómo sacó un permiso de trabajo y un permiso de viajar si entró en documentada? Sería un combo card through AOS, maybe? Yeah, no, pero ¿cómo? No es elegible para ajustar setas. Mm. I want some. Esa es la cosa. Estoy, estoy viendo gente que están aplicando por justas setas que no son elegibles. Y el permiso de trabajo y el combo card que ya no van a hacer porque mucha gente no van a aplicar por el combo. Um, es inválido técnicamente porque usted no es elegible a justas setas. Pero esa es una acta clínica. La persona que va a adjudicar el 485 no está dando la, el permiso de trabajo y el permiso de viaje. Tenga mucho cuidado aquí, Rayo. Mucho cuidado aquí. Um, si entró en documentada y salió y rentó con parole, está bien, viajase. Pero si no hizo esto, ten cuidado. No, the countries are never listed on the approval notice. They just tell you you can go. And frankly, the guys at the port of entry have no idea where you're going either. They don't know. They don't know. Dos iwi, si no un año entre los dos, tengo que explicar las fechas. No solo decir que tengo dos entradas. Uh, you'll need to put the exact dates of entry and departure in this in, in on the question that it asks about that. Put the details. Ponga, ponga las fechas detalladas en la, en, en la forma. Mm -hmm. 
they salir y entrar. entrar. Uh, time frame, four months. Difficulty, monumentally easy. Um, I don't know why being a citizen has nothing about being an AOS. Oh, your husband needs to become a citizen. Look, you don't have to be Shakespeare to become a U.S. citizen. All right. That's true. If, uh, basic communication skills are fine. Okay. You have it. Mm-hmm. And he gets two chances on the test. So, yep. Total. Well, that includes a work permit and a travel document. I think she's, Anna, Anna you're asking this question a lot. We should depend yeah. on that. Yeah, we said. Yes, we, yes, it's like four times. Yes, postmark. The postmark that matters. <laughs> That's why he's the GOAT. Well, so why don't they? It's the bigger question. We all got <laughs> trained to do the same thing. <sighs> You know what it is with my gray hair? I, mean, I just don't care anymore. It's like whatever immigration. <laughs> Hi, Natalie. I'll give you a great. I'll give you a great example. Oh, hey, Natalie, how you doing? Natalie's just amazing. Well, first of all, I would never run USCIS. What they need is a professional manager, someone with an MBA who's managed large dysfunctional corporations. They don't need an immigration lawyer. But that's their problem. Everybody that runs the government grew in, in the USCIS grew up in the agency. They all started as some random examiner or some random border patrol guy, and they just stayed around long enough to become ahead of something. Right, That's right. not a basis to run an organization. You got to bring in for prof- I would just burn the whole damn thing to the ground personally. There you have it, Natalie. <laughs> I'd burn the whole thing down the ground. Uh, yeah, good, we really wish you good luck, Iris. Awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah, look, look at Lewis two down there. Uh, Here's something. Yeah, if you honestly, I would come to an airport. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. go back uh, up one to Annabelle. Can you file for uh, for? Well, first of all, is this, and I'm gonna let's talk hypothetically. Let's say hypothetically, somebody five years ago in a job they left four years ago filled out an I nine and checked that box. One, my question is, how do you remember that? Right. How do you remember that? Two, who knows about that besides you? Answer right. that question. Nobody. Because employers throw I-9s away after three years. So if you would be dumb enough to say something about that, that hypothetical person, you deserve to be denied. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. The hypothetical person would be dumb enough to be denied. Um, yeah, well, that's right, Emily. They're going to keep the money. That's the thing. Their goal is to coerce you into paying for the new work written travel document and then do the adjustment fast enough or take a year on advance. They're taking a year on regular advanced paroles or a year, right? And EADs could take eight or nine months. They're going to pocket that money. Absolutely. It's a, the whole thing's a Ponzi scheme. It's all a Ponzi scheme. If you don't know what that is, Google Ponzi scheme. <laughs> okay. I love it. Son. My, I, we never talk money on, on videos. Never. Ever. Because never. you mm-hmm. know why? Every case is different. Every case is different. You just never know. Okay. If I get the green life, can I apply for FAFSA? I mean, if you get a green card, can you? Yes, permanent <laughs> residents are eligible for FAFSA. Yes, that's funny. And did they now I have lawful entry? Yes, you do, because your husband's got to be a U.S. citizen to sponsor you. Uh, and it's taking right now four years for a waiver, although we filed a lawsuit. And the government promised to be down by two years, two years by eight by October. Just tell your husband to naturalize. Honestly, because it takes so long to do a waiver, too long. Even if he just got his green card, it's still fast for him to naturalize. Mm-hmm. So, but he doesn't speak English. Oh, I have an idea for you. How about you only talk to him in English? <laughs> Some cartoons. <laughs> he will quickly. Yeah, he will quickly learn English. Um. All right. Um, my look at on. Oh, look at Andrea. Two down there. Andrea Bass. Uh I said, "Between twenty minutes, how long will just take?" I have no idea how long it just will take. Will take in two years. But that's why you travel now. So, and it's tough to believe that that woman has a child who's 21. That's right. shocking. <laughs> she looks like she's 21 in that picture. Um, so, um, let's see. And Natalie, yeah, Natalie says it takes six to 12 months or so. Um, let's see, Elvira here. Let's look at Elvira next. Uh, can I submit? And then before the yes. No, no, you have to submit them all together. You can't. Yeah, do all because together. they're dependent on, you only get them because you have the 485 file. Okay. Um, okay. I have to do advanced parole in May. We have plenty to apply for this. It will be turned. DACA expires in October. Yes. Always extend your DACA. Always. Extend it in April. 
it's like buy, you know, why do you buy life insurance? Well, there's a reason you buy life insurance. You might die. Yeah. Yep. Right? You know, and then your spouse can live after you're dead. This is the same thing. This is like buying health insurance, car insurance, life. Like, you know, you buy the insurance. It's worth it. Sure, yeah. Um, why does Doc husband as a US citizen? What if doesn't have a misdemeanor his record? Doesn't matter. They don't care. Unless the husband is convicted of a sexual offense, mm-hmm. it's nothing burger. Doesn't matter. Okay. Doc expires beginning of October, December. Apply for AP. No, renew, file now. You, you can't even renew until May. File for your AP now. Okay. Dear Mark for file. Uh, how you don't there's no I've never heard of a court reopening a divorce. Sorry. No, you won't, yeah. Presumably, if you did, then you could hit the deadline, but I've never heard of that happening. How long did you be married? Well, long enough to have a parole. I mean, I'd say 37 seconds probably is enough time to file yeah. after adjustment of status. There's no waiting period. You do have to have your marriage certificate, though. Your marriage license is not proof you were married. You have to file it with the state and then get a certificate. And that usually takes a couple of weeks. Okay. A teacher would like to get information about getting H1B through my district, illegal entry. All I mean, all you look at the pay, look at my my LinkedIn that I put this up on. Look at, you know, email me. I'll happy to send you the details. It's very simple to do. Um Carla's one of those people that um I think with if my theory holds water, she can get a green card. Well, no, we're going to know in a six months or so. Um, yes, that's right. 245i is out there. If you don't know what that is, it probably doesn't apply to you then. Okay. Um, so look at Laura, two down from that. My um, Mexican sister, petition for my mom was legal. What would the time plan be? Well, well, is your mom ready to live outside the U.S. for 10 years? Because yeah. that's what she's going to do. I get this all the time. Oh, mi santísimo hijo, ya tiene 21 años y quiero pedir. Señora, ¿cómo entró al país? Oh, indocumentado. Well, ¿estás listo de vivir en México por 10 años? Yeah. Now, if your sister joins the military, even the reserve or the National Guard, bing, bang, boom, she gets a green card here. You have a your sister. <laughs> oh, uh, how's it being sponsored by resident work? Uh, you. You do an I-130, 601A, and then you go to the consulate and get your green card. No, um, no. I doubt your husband will file an affidavit of support for you if you're currently separated. Mm-hmm. So I only unlikely you're getting a green card if you're separated. I would suggest counseling or a divorce and fall in love with somebody else. <laughs> uh, um, all right. Let's um, my app, Navap. Two down from Natalie here. If it's a consular, I think I mean today, keep with us. I said, I see KMB and me talk to the Well, right, you need to write to the consulate that you're adjusting status mm-hmm. in the United yeah, States. Yeah. You need to do that now. Okay. Um, Iris needs to talk to you guys. You want to tell Iris, you want to tell them how to make an appointment with you for preparation? Yeah, Jimmercigada.org under services and book a one on one with us. Okay. All over Facebook, guys. Well, Ray, does it take longer? Well, no, Mexicans and Brazilians get, if you're talking about through marriage, it's the same for everybody. But if you're talking about family petitions, Brazilians are generally be, be faster than Mexicans because of a long window. But that's only for pref, what they call preference petitions. Mm. So filed for you by your siblings, filed by an parent, you're over 21. Those, those are preference petitions. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Just go ahead and do it. All right, hey, Annabelle, go. You'll have a great time. You'll be fine. Enjoy <laughs> your life. Enjoy your, don't drink the water. Um, <laughs> um, um, let's see. I'm running, I'm not big up on time here, Vanessa. I'm going to need, let's get a couple more questions and I need to run. I want you to do this again. Okay. I'm a nurse. I got my doc at 18 years and seven months. So let's look at Carla. Oh, yeah, Carla, we already answered Carla's question there. So um, um, where are let's we? See. Let's see. Uh, look at Duff. Uh, you go. Can you just please provide her with your email? All right. Look at look at 530. Oh, can you please provide? My email is easy. It's Chuck at immigration.net. Okay. Um, Carla, you said? Look at 533. There's one from Jessica Carmo. Mm, 
533. Okay, more than the last 533. There we go. My stepdad and his partner have tree service, but that does not have a status. Give the answer is no, because a tree service does not require a bachelor's degree. H1Bs are again for professionals, people who have bachelor's degrees in the United States. Um, um, let's see, Luis, I do not have offices in LA. Uh, I'm just in Atlanta. Um, Anna Estrada, are you cook from Atlanta? Well, the only other cook I know is my son. <laughs> my son, my son's an immigration lawyer in Utah. He's also awesome, but he only speaks Mandarin Chinese. He doesn't speak Spanish. But yes, I am the cook in Atlanta. That is <laughs> That's funny. All right. All right, Vanessa, I got to run. Um, right. It's been awesome today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get back together here shortly and have some more fun. Uh, and I, I personally just want to try and thank Dreamers Together. You have changed how tens of thousands of people benefit from DACA. I mean, it's, it's, it's a remarkable thing that you guys have done here. Yeah. And it, it just couldn't have been possible without you, Vanessa, Natalie, and others that are part of this. Thank you very much. It's just fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for supporting us, Chuck. All right, we'll see you guys later.